I could so go for some Indian food right now. <laughs> a curry would be very nice. I'm partial to green, personally. Uh, I'm pretty much good with any curry. Ooh, that lovely restaurant we go to. That's so nice. Can't wait to go to it again. Ah, well, hello. I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 12, Spice Up Your Life. <laughs> I like the way you said that. Ah, uh, and I wasn't quite sure about the beginning of this meeting. I was like, do you want to trust a castle map that's flickering like that and had kind of like seizures before it figured out that it wanted Rarity and Pinkie Pie? Uh, even though it worked out in the end, but I'm like, are we sure we should trust the map now? <laughs> I know, that was a lot of flickering, and that was a lot of false starts. What if all of those ponies were actually needed in all those locations? Hmm, that's a good point. I never thought of that. Even the double twilight, because that could actually represent starlight, or it could represent that twilight is desperately needed, or that we need a time-traveling one. Yeah, I was going to say, or time travel happened. And I love how Spike was like, yeah, this thing's not working, thanks to her. Thank you for being so blunt again, Spike. I'm going to put you over here now. <laughs> mm -hmm. we're, we're supposed to be trying to move forward from the past. And, you know, unlike Trixie, we've actually forgiven Starlight. Mm -hmm. I was also a little confused on how the rating systems apparently work. Because I, I don't know. I'm, I need have to look it up. But isn't the uh, four or five star rating system a group of chefs or something that rate restaurants? Or a consortium of people who know what they're talking about not just a single person yes and i mean any one reviewer can kind of make or break a place especially if they're highly regarded but it sounds like this pony is considered the be all and end all for canterlot because it was specifically canterlot so she kind of has control and gets all of these restaurants to put out boring tasteless food in tiny portions and to be so undifferentiated that I could barely tell that Rarity and Pinkie Pie switched restaurants. Yeah, the biggest change was a slight change in color palette and the symbols on the decorations on the walls. Mm -hmm. Once again, Indian food. I want some now, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Though I gotta say that my ears may not be the best for this, but I gotta say that Saffron's Indian accent felt more real compared to her father's, which felt more like the classic fake Indian accent. I am very terrible with accents, so I don't really have an ear for them at all. Well, I'm just saying, based on my experience with um, fake Indian accents I've heard in other media programs, that his sounded more fake compared to hers. Though I could be wrong, I'm just stating that based on... Because you know, this is just our thoughts. <laughs> Uh, so if I'm wrong, it's okay. Say it to me gently in the comments. Please be gentle. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you were thinking, Ember, but we're moving on. <laughs> uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> uh, speaking of Saffron and her father, I really liked Saffron's design. She's a very nicely designed pony. Though, what's really funny, as I was drawing her, I was like, wow, she feels a lot like Pinkie Pie in base design. I think it's because of the way they did her hair, how it has a similar looping design compared to Pinkie's. Especially, I already noticed it when I was in the line art stage, because that is just the no color influence whatsoever. It's just the base model of the pony with the hair and mane. And which is basically the same thing, but I'm referring to the stuff on top of their head and the tail. And I felt like, wow, this feels a lot like Pinky, especially with this the way the smile is going on. Well, they do all have similar base models, though Twilight's is getting a little bit taller. But yeah, I liked her overall design. I liked the way they did her shirt, especially animating it. It actually moved independently of Saffron's walk. When she walked, it would actually react as if it was on a physical model like that. It would jiggle, the sleeves would retract and um, float back and forth. It was really nice. I was like, well, that's a nice little detail. Most people wouldn't even pay attention to that. I just happened to glance like, whoa, hey, those are actually moving right. Nice. <laughs> and speaking of other designs, I wonder if the critic was designed to look similar to the guy from Ratatouille. That was the feeling that I got, but I haven't paid much attention to food critics. 
for like a long time i'm more interested in the people who make the food than the people who critique it mm -hmm. so if uh, zesty is based on someone a real food critic it's not one that I'm aware of, but I was also reminded of the critic from Ratatouille. Mm -hmm. And speaking of um, famous people, one of the background ponies that was coming in through the door at the end was modeled after that guy who has that one show. He's known for really hating on people and stuff like that. Uh, he's a chef. Something about Hell's Kitchen is like I remember right now. I knew his name, but I can't Gordon remember. Gordon right Ramsay. Yes, one of the ponies was modeled after him. So that was a nice little touch. Ah, so what'd you think about the song? I thought it was pretty good. I liked the accents that they did. It was, it felt very Indian, though I need to see if it kind of matched anything from Bollywood, if they were going for that kind of feel. <laughs> I love how you asked me for my opinion and then continued with your opinion. Yeah, I noticed that. Sorry. Please? The song really highlighted what each duo was working on. My main problem with it was... How could rarity possibly be telling someone not to be unique? This is the pony who made individual dresses for each of her friends that were perfect for them. This is the pony who in her canterlock boutique got weighed down by the constant sameness of having to produce identical princess dress after princess dress. This is a fashionista who does not copy anyone else's design. She doesn't follow trends, she sets them. Hmm. So why would she take and not apply those same principles to this endeavor? Hmm. Maybe because it was outside of her expertise and she was trying to help someone. So she thought the best way to help them was to make them as matching as the rest of them to be able to get this food critic's three hoof approval. Well, that was... Because Rarity's focus was on getting the three hoof rating, and so you had to make everything the way Zesty likes it. But in order to do that more convincingly, to me, for Rarity to be advocating this, it would have been more, okay, we're going to pretend for one night. Once you get the rating, we'll go back to normal. Because that's how I would have played out the episode. We have boring panels covering the decor, and we have this you know, very plain, boring food set out. And then while Zesty's there, the panels start falling down. The smell of real food is coming from the kitchen. And it all falls apart that way for being a facade. Hmm, I can see that angle. That sounds like a pretty good idea. I do like the way the episode played out, though. Ah, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, it, Pinkie Pie's expressions throughout are awesome, especially when she's tasting the bland food. It's like, Ugh! It just gets progressively worse. <laughs> well, one of those little sushi roll things looked like it was a rolled up leaf with a twig stuck through it. I thought I even ready went, ooh. <laughs> yeah, so we establish early on that a three hoof review doesn't actually mean the food is any good. But apparently, everyone in Canterlot is so hooked on this reviewer that they go to these restaurants that they don't like the food at just in order to follow a trend. And Rarity wins by, hey, word of mouth. <laughs> because Zesty's like, what are you all doing here? I haven't approved this place. Um, Rarity said it was good. You can't trust word of mouth. Um, yeah, so Zagat reviews versus Yelp reviews. Word of mouth is something that you can't really buy, good or bad. <laughs> Yeah, though you can buy reviews. <laughs> you can definitely buy reviews. And there are some reviews that definitely read as purchased. But, you know, real, actual, human interaction word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth was a good way to defeat this. Though. Uh, the message seemed a little cloudy to me. Was it was the message be yourself? No matter what other people say you should be or follow your own instincts, even if the crowd is going a different direction? Kind of a combination because, you know, Rarity was pointing out to Zesty, you have a very particular taste in food and that's fine, that's your thing, but not every pony has to agree with you. She did seem like a bit of a control freak. Just a tiny bit, which again plays back to the Ratatouille reviewer because, you know, his assistant comes in and goes, well, 
What about that restaurant? It's popular. What do you mean it's popular? I finished it off. It can't possibly be popular. <laughs> I need to watch that movie again. It's been forever since I've seen it. Yes, in your infinite spare time, let's watch things that we've previously seen instead of all the things we haven't seen. I can dream, can't I? This is a My Little Pony recording, so yes, yes, you can dream. <laughs> uh, uh, even though you've probably said some of them, any other major nitpicks or minor nitpicks for that matter? Oh, I can always nitpick something. It just, how could Rarity not know that these three hoof restaurants were so blah? Oh, yeah. She's gone to Canterlot a bunch. Oh, yeah, I know. I was thinking that myself. Like, has she eaten any of these before? Or is she just following the word of her sources? Saying that three hoofs are restaurants you want to go to because they're good. Uh, apparently not. How are they all still open? Is it just because everyone, like, you must eat somewhere and these are the only restaurants here? They're all the same. Does it really matter which one? Let's roll a dice. Six. We're going to that one today. And that's pretty much what it was like. And then, you know, you also have this underlying lesson of we heard from two other chefs who had three hoof restaurants who hated the food they were putting out. Mm -hmm. So there was also that lesson of don't lose the reason of why you were doing something. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, yeah. you know, Saffron and her father were still cooking, but they lost the reason of why they wanted to be. So it's more of don't lose that spark. Don't lose that passion. Remember why you chose what you did. Mm -hmm. They started cooking together because they enjoyed cooking together and they thought the restaurant would be a good idea to continue doing that. Except make money off of it too. Well, they wanted to share with others, you know, that joy that they got from the food. And they just got so caught up in keeping the restaurant going because of how bad it was getting because of the reviews that they lost track of why they did it in the first place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is a little bit going back to Applejack's day off. You can't just keep doing something. You have to remember why. Hmm. You know, I think there was actually three messages in this episode. It was one of those mixed message ones where they have three different messages going on at the same time. And they all have a similar theme to each other. I'm, I'm waiting for you to state all three since you're saying there's three. You, you need to articulate. I articulated two of them already. The one of, like, don't mm -hmm. listen to others, just be yourself. Uh, you guys can hear, I know there was one that was similar to that, but it was slightly different. Um, ah, don't do what others tell you, even if it is the popular trend. And the third one is what we just said about, remember why you're doing something, and continue to do it because of why you did it. You enjoy doing it, so keep doing it for those reasons. Yes, don't lose the passion, don't lose the joy of what you were doing. Mm hmm So is there more? I just kind of liked the part at the end where Zesty walked out. It was kind of like almost a bully showdown where you win because the other one refuses to engage. Mm. Because, you know, Zesty came in and, you know, tried to make them all leave. And then Rarity stood up for, you know, diversity in tastes and that not everybody has to do what you do. And then several of the three hoof chefs supported her. And then Rarity got that final jab in using the reverse of what Zesty said to her earlier about, oh, yeah, associating yourself with this restaurant is going to hurt your social standing. And Rarity gets to turn that around and go, you know, if you don't try the food, you might <laughs> hurt your social standing considering how incredibly busy and popular this place is. Oh, I suddenly remembered another part I liked near the beginning of the episode where the father was like, well, since no one's going to arrive, I'm just going to pack up this place. <laughs> father, don't close up the restaurant while there's still people here. Well, after they leave. <laughs> We're not going to have any other customers, so I may as well take care of it now. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting ready. <laughs> when he's packing up the dishes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's a little harsh. I mean, you have the nice thing where you... You know, say earlier, oh, yes, I don't care about you at all. I only moved to Canterlot with you so that we could open this restaurant. But he just shows that 
he's not believing in her. It's like, no, this is going to fail. Just give up. Quit being so mule stubborn. So during the dishes pack up scene for a second there, because of the wide shot, I thought Pinky may be cleaning the dishes while she's licking them. <laughs> I'm like, is he putting those dishes away after Pinky Pie licks them clean? <laughs> I had that brief thought too. And then I was like, no, no, she's licking the plate that had her food on it clean because the food was amazing. That's totally fine. I don't do it in a restaurant because reasons, but... Yeah, it's a public place. Mm -hmm. It's kind of rude to other patrons. But yes, I've been known to do that on occasions as well. Like, oh, this was so good. Lick, lick, lick. Or you just use the spoon and, or whatever utensil you have and just scrape as much of whatever sauce is left off. And you're going, I wish I had some bread for this. <laughs> ah, apparently we're both hungry. I guess we shouldn't have done this recording when we haven't eaten yet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, I think we covered everything. Even if we haven't, I think maybe it's time to grab a bite. <laughs> uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 6, Episode 12, Spice Up Your Life. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. If you really like my art and want to support me to continue doing it, I have a Patreon. I also have commissions. Please check link for commission availability.